This is the HCH Mortgage Podcast, brought to you by HCH Financial Services, a new brand powered by Holiday Cottage Handbook and HD Consultants. I'm your host, James Varley, the founder of Holiday Cottage Handbook, and the aim of this new series is to share everything you need to know about holiday let borrowing. HCH Financial Services specializes in providing access to the best holiday let mortgages on the market. Our team of award-winning brokers provide an unrivaled service Whether you're looking for your first holiday let loan, a remortgage, or a financial product like life insurance or will writing. The team can also help you secure a range of other products, including residential, buy-to-let, and HMO mortgages, along with bridging finance and equity release. To get in touch with the team, call 01206 577 266 or email advice at hchfs.com. .co.uk. You can also visit the website for further details. It's hchfs.co.uk. Welcome to the HCH Mortgage Podcast. Our goal is to share everything you need to know about holiday let mortgages and spotlight some of the leading products on the market. Today, we're going to be talking about the different types of holiday let mortgage and which investors they would suit the most. With me to run through them is the lead consultant for HCH Financial Services, Samantha Termain. Samantha, it's a pleasure to welcome you back to the podcast. Thanks very much, James. Okay, then let's run through the various different types of holiday let mortgage. We've got four to get through. Number one, fixed rate mortgages. So explain to us what this kind of mortgage is and tell us which kind of investors it would suit the most. Okay, so a fixed rate mortgage is a product where the interest rate remains constant or fixed for a predetermined period. And that can usually range between anywhere between two and 10 years. Um, During that fixed period, regardless of fluctuations in the economy or changes to the Bank of England base rate, um, the interest rate on that particular product would remain unchanged. Um, Fixed rate mortgages uh, in the UK are popular among sort of most homeowners or purchasers that I guess require the the security and certainty of what their monthly payments would be um, and assurance they're not going to change within that initial benefit period. So in terms of the holiday let mortgage market, do you find that most investors take a fixed rate product? We tend to find um, sort of first time buyers, first time landlords might take a fixed product um, purely for sort of security um, and for budgeting purposes, because they're not, you know, have that experience to work out what their costs and charges would be. A lot of the experienced um, landlords in the holiday let sector tend to use more of the variable rate products because um, it gives them greater flexibility on what they're looking to do. Yeah, that's interesting. And that kind of mirrors my own experience, really. The first product that I took out for a holiday let mortgage, it was a fixed rate. And then later on, I got a variable rate. But that quickly was a decision that I regretted after 14 Bank of England interest rate raises. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to deal with that when the when the remortgage comes up next year. So uh, number two is, and you mentioned it there, variable rate mortgages. So explain to us about those and who it would, uh, who it would suit. Okay, so there are three types of variable rate mortgages within the UK. You've got your tracker products, where the interest rate is linked to a specific base rate, often the Bank of England's base rate. Um, And then the lender puts a percentage either above or below that that actual um, base rate. You've got your standard variable rate products. Um, They're also known as sort of SVR or follow-on rates. And these products have a set default rate by the lender and they can change at the lender's discretion. And that will often move in response to sort of changes within the the broader economy or the lender's own funding costs. Now, as you said, we've seen some increases during the last sort of 12 to 24 months due to obviously cost of living and inflation. And then you've got what is known as a discounted variable rate mortgage. Now, these mortgages differ a little bit. Um, because they, the lender actually provides a discount off their own standard variable rate um, before obviously moving on to that follow on rate or, or the standard variable rate. So these products normally on you know the, the tracker or the discounted variable are, are within sort of two to three years. They're not long-term products. Um, with any variable rate mortgage, Borrowers need to be aware that you know their monthly payments could fluctuate based in changes in the market. 
which could then impact their, you know, budgeting and financial stability. So we would always have discussions with regards to potential risks and benefits between a fixed rate and a variable rate product. Do you tend to find that the variable rate products are a little cheaper than the fixed rate products generally? That is correct. So one of the sort of, I guess, positives and negatives with a a variable rate product is they tend to have lower initial rates, um, greater flexibility, um, because again, if if the market goes down, which everyone hopes it will do, then those lenders um, will obviously, you know, move their, their standard variable rate or the Bank of England will reduce their rate and then they will take advantage of, you know, those costs and charges that are passed back to the borrower. Um, Variable rates are a little bit different because they tend to have no early repayment charges, whereas you might find that a fixed rate will have an early repayment charge for the initial period. So, two, three, five, ten years, depending on the product. So, you know, there is obviously positives and negatives with any products out there. We should probably touch a little bit on the SVRs there, the standard variable rates. So generally the fixed rate mortgage or whatever mortgage you take out has usually two, five or 10 years, like you mentioned there. Um, And then unless you refinance, you're going to go onto the standard variable rate, which usually is, is quite high or it's higher than what you've been paying. Sometimes it can work out well if economic conditions are suitable and you might end up on an SVR like I did after the uh, after the global financial crash and it turned out to be hardly anything. My mortgage went down uh, substantially, but more often than not, the SVR is is quite high. So just explain to us kind of what this is and why most most of the time it's good to avoid being on the standard variable rate. Well, the standard variable rate obviously is is a, a margin that's been put in place by the lenders um, to make sure that they cover, you know, their own associated costs and their their obviously back books. So, from I guess like the fixed rates, the trackers, their variables, they have you know that predetermined uh, time scale. Standard variable rate is 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 set by the bank. Um, the types of mortgages um, that that have no end date. So there are a few um, what used to be like lifetime trackers and they could potentially be, you know, the standard variable rate product for the lender. It it just gives a little bit more um, options to the borrowers out there. Some people have decided to stay on their standard variable rate rather than locking in for another, you know, two, three, five, ten years because they want to see what's happening in the market. Um, and I can fully understand that. You know, if you're locking in, you might have penalties. If you want to exit, let's say the market drops substantially, then you want to be able to move within the best position for you, you know, to take advantage of that. Yeah, and usually once you're on the standard variable rate, there's no early repayment charges and you can switch whenever you want to and it's quite simple. So this is what people, like you say, are doing now. They're just waiting maybe, hopefully, for the market to improve a little bit in terms of the products available and maybe take out a a fixed rate, which is going to be at a much better interest rate, maybe in six months or 12 months time. That is correct. I mean, the I guess sort of benefits of the variable rate mortgage as well is is some lenders also have unlimited overpayments. Let's say you're obviously talking about the holiday let sector and you're getting an increased income you might want to obviously allocate some of those funds to, you know, overpaying and reducing that mortgage sooner rather than later. And these products will allow you to do that. Whereas obviously there may be products out there that have a capped overpayment facility, maybe at 10 or 20 percent. And you're you're within those parameters each time that you, you're looking to do it per annum. So again, it's it's down to what your, I guess, risk appetite is, um, but also on your longer term goals. Yeah, and definitely a little bit more flexibility, like we were saying. So number one, we've had fixed rate mortgages. Number two, variable rate mortgages. You mentioned them a little bit before, but just explain to us what tracker mortgages are. So a tracker mortgage is a, um, a product that a lender has, but it follows the Bank of England base rate. So it is pegged to the Bank of England base rate. And then there's normally a percentage, depending on the economy, above or below that's added onto that figure. So let's say, for example, the current Bank of England base rate is at 5.25%. 
then they may have a, a percentage of, let's say, 1% or 2% on top of that, or it may be sort of 1% or 2% below that, depending on, you know, where they want to attract the business. And again, there is obviously pros and cons with, with those types. You tend to find your tracker rates are lower in rate than a fixed rate mortgage. Um, and again, you know, they come with their risks and benefits. And number four on the list is discount mortgages. So just outline these for us. Yeah. So a discounted variable mortgage is pegged to the lender's own standard variable rate. Okay. They do set, so the standard variable rate, as we said previously, is, a, is an amount higher than, you know, the, the market average. And then you've got, you know, a discount off of that. So again, a bit like a tracker, there'll be maybe one or two percent that's discounted from the lender's standard rate, variable rate to give you, you know, the rate that they're currently offering their product, right? And again, those standard variable rates that the lender is setting can fluctuate. Um, but again, benefits, I suppose, is that if the market stabilizes, the lender decreases their standard variable rates because some rates are incredibly high at the moment, then you will see the benefit because your margin will obviously decrease in line with that. So in terms of the investors right now who are taking out holiday let mortgages, which products are the most popular? You've, if we're looking at products, um, you, it depends on your, your level of, of experience. Um, most people probably are looking at shorter term fixed products just to weather the storm. There are some experienced landlords out there that we're seeing that are looking at more at the discounted variable. They're happy that, you know, that there seems to be, I guess, more or less volatile than your tracker products that are, you know, pegged to the Bank of England base rate. And as we said, we saw 14 changes happen within quick succession of each other. The lender standard variable rates haven't moved, you know, massively. You know, we might have started at 5%. We're now maybe about eight, um, seven or eights, depending on the lenders out there. There are some that obviously on the, the higher sell and looking at, you know, your nines and 10%. But there seems to be, I guess, more comfort on a discounted variable because unless something horribly goes wrong in the market, the standard variable rate that the lender has set seems to give, you know, those experienced landlords, you know, additional security that, you know, it, they don't move on a, on a regular basis in reality. And let's just touch on interest only or repayment. We're, we're going to have an episode dedicated to this soon, uh, but just tell us the difference and outline what most borrowers are doing right now in the holiday let space. Okay, so a repayment mortgage pretty much says as it, it does on the tin. You will you will pay a monthly mortgage payment, and that will pay off the interest and the capital at the same time. So over the course of a twenty five year period, you know you will pay off the mortgage. On an interest only, you will have you know a set um, a borrowing amount that you you know let's say a hundred thousand, and over the next. 25 years, you will tend to just pay the interest. Now, those payments will tend to be a lot lower than the repayment mortgages, but you will still owe, you know, the initial amount that you borrowed in 25 years time. Uh, as we can go in a little bit more detail uh, on the next episode, we can obviously look at, you know, what types of repayment vehicles would be needed to give the lenders comfort, you know, on how you're going to repay your mortgage on an interest only basis. And the vast majority of people in the holiday let mortgage space, the investors, they're taking out interest only products, right, to, to make sure they're that as is profitable correct. as 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 they can be. That it, yeah. I mean, obviously, again, depends on on your longer term goals, but most people, you know, they they've got these products to, or or properties to generate an income. Um, so it's again, it's a business or a proposition. So you want to pay as probably as less as possible but still, you know, maximize on, on the income capacity that you're going to get. Okay, then let's take a look at the best products on the market right now. You've picked out a couple of ones for us. We've got a two-year and a five-year. So tell us about the two-year to begin with. Okay, so the best two-year holiday uh, let rate at the market is currently at 4.8%. Now, what you're probably seeing um, in the market at the moment is that the lower products do tend to come with more um, heftier arrangement fees. This particular product comes with a 4% arrangement fee. 
There are obviously going to be lower priced products that may have lower fees, but again, just depends on, you know, your longer term options. The best five year on the market is currently at 5.95%. Um, and again, that comes with a, a 995 fee. So you can see the disparity between, you know, the rate and, and the markup um, on the products. But again, you know, this is where we as, um, you know, advisors will have a look at the wider market and work out, you know, what's the best based on your circumstances. And are these both fixed rate products? These are both fixed rate products at the moment. Your, your discounted products are, will obviously be a little bit lower than that. Um, but at the moment, you know, the, the lenders are repricing on, on quite a few occasions. So rates are moving at a, at a swift pace at the moment. All right. Good to hear. Hopefully those rates are going to be dropping down in the near future. Sam, it's been a pleasure as ever. Thank you for joining us. Not a problem at all. Lovely to be here. Okay, great. That's it for today's show. To get in touch with our team of brokers and access the very best holiday let mortgages on the market, call 01206 577 266 or email advice at hchfs.co.uk. For further details, you can go to the website hchfs.co.uk. Finally, if you'd like to get in touch with the show, you can email me directly, james at holidaycottagehandbook.com. That's it for now. I'll speak to you soon.